That's right. You read the title correctly. This is the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory, and no, I am not joking. This seemingly innocent ice cream parlor is a front for something very sinister. The beloved SpongeBob movie actually has a much darker and tragic meaning to it. I am being 100% serious when I tell you that I think this is my best, most convincing theory yet. And if you thought my evolution theory was dark, well, get ready. This is the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory. Hey, uh, what's the biggest animal that you have? Oh boy, Alex has finally lost his mind. Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory? What, did he make that in a random word generator? Trust me, there's actually a lot to this theory. And if anyone's qualified to make it, it's me, considering I made a whole web series about a restaurant being a front for a cult. Here at Pizza Time Pizza, we don't use any preservatives or fake ingredients. Pizza Time Pizza is not a cult. It's not pizza, it's not pizza, it's not pizza, it's not pizza. But those are the old days. I'm the SpongeBob guy now, and there is an insane demand for more of these theories. I mean, the Mrs. Puff one has like 12 million views. That is crazy. Thank you guys so much. Now, this is the part of the video where I try to make you think I'm about to start the theory, but then, oh boy, a sponsor. Everyone loves those. But today, I'm actually sponsored by a company that I'm really excited to talk about. Happy Meat Farms is an animal farming company that offers a variety of different delicious meat products. In the meat industry, there's so many factory farms out there that force thousands of animals into tight, unlivable spaces and pump them full of GMOs. But Happy Meat Farms is a completely humane and organic alternative. Every animal has plenty of wide outdoor space to roam free, and every animal is raised 100% naturally with no added chemicals. As an animal lover myself, I am so grateful to be sponsored by Happy Meat Farms. If you want to learn more about them and what they stand for, go to happymeatfarms.com. Now let's begin the theory. Goofy Goobers is an old-fashioned ice cream parlor that first appeared in the Spongebob movie. It's the very definition of a fun, innocent place for children. So how on earth did I come to the conclusion that it's actually an alien death cult? In fact, what even is an alien death cult? Usually, it's a religious group that wants you to believe that one day aliens will come to Earth and take the members of the cult to a better place, and in order to get there, they have to commit mass suicide, the most infamous example of this being Heaven's Gate. Like I said, this is going to be a very dark video with some serious subject matter. So, how does this have anything to do with Goofy Goobers? In the more recent seasons of Spongebob, they've started referencing Goofy Goobers again. In fact, there's even an episode called The Goofy Newbie where Patrick gets a job there. And it's in this episode when Patrick is watching an employee training video that I first realized there was something more going on here. The story of our ice cream begins with our founder, Reginald Goober, who for some unexplained reason was nicknamed Goofy. In 1842, he headed west in a covered ice cream wagon. He served his warm ice cream on rocks and sticks. From those humble beginnings, Goofy Goober has grown into a multi-billion dollar business. You know, it's a pretty standard company video. They just want their employees to wash their hands and keep their work area clean. We only ask that you, one, practice good hygiene, two, maintain good work habits. Nothing out of the ordinary, except there's one more thing that they want you to do. And three, believe in extraterrestrials. Ice cream. Huh, an organization that wants you to believe in aliens. That couldn't be a Heaven's Gate reference in Spongebob, could it? No, that, that's, that's crazy. And even if it was, it could just be a random throwaway gag. There's no way Goofy Goobers is actually a cult, right? But then I started to rewatch every appearance of Goofy Goobers, and things took on a whole new meaning. 
One of the most basic ideas of a cult is that they strip you of your individuality and make you change your entire identity to be about the cult. And that's exactly what Goofy Goobers does. Everyone there wears Goofy Goober uniforms just like a cult. I mean, what other restaurant has not just employees, but customers that always dress up in a specific way? And their theme song that is constantly repeated and reinforced is just the simple line, I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah. You're a Goofy Goober, yeah. We're all Goofy. I'm a Goofy Goober, you're a Goofy Goober, we're all Goofy Goobers. It is literally just a song saying that your whole identity is based around Goofy Goobers, and that's it. And in the Spongebob movie, there's a scene where Spongebob and Patrick have to try their best to not sing along to the theme song, and it literally causes them intense pain to not sing along. Don't sing along, Patrick! Yeah, I'm trying! Yeah. Try so hard! It's as if they've been brainwashed and physically can't stop themselves from singing it. And you can't even just chalk this up to Spongebob and Patrick being weirdos. Two other fish can't stop themselves from singing along, even though it means they'll get beat up for it. Goofy, Goofy, Goober, Goober, yeah! And just like how many cults have an icon or god that they worship, Goofy Goobers has the dancing peanut mascot that's all over the restaurant's branding. I mean, just look at how excited all the kids are when he comes out. Goofy Goober! <laughs> Alright, but just because kids like a mascot doesn't mean that they have some kind of religious worship for them. Well, if you don't believe me, take it from Spongebob himself. Open your eyes, Patrick! We blow bubbles, we eat ice cream, we worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake! We do not worship him. Patrick, you've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight! What do you call that? Worship? In the Spongebob movie video game, there's even a Goofy Goober token that reads, In Goofy We Trust, replacing the word God with Goofy. Hmm, things are looking awfully culty, aren't they? Cults will also often create reading material about their beliefs for their followers to read, and Goofy Goobers is no exception to this. In the new Spongebob spin-off, The Patrick Star Show, we see a Goofy Goober employee reading some kind of book about ice cream. And look at him, he's not busy working, he's choosing to read this in his downtime. I mean, compare him to Squidward who sometimes reads in his downtime at work. It's not like he's reading about the Krusty Krab. This book looks a lot like it's a doctrine for a cult's beliefs. A major part of how cults get so successful is by getting their followers to give them money. Now, obviously Goofy Goobers charges people for ice cream, but they actually convince their followers to trade their money for a made-up Goofy Goober currency. Uh, I don't know what Plankton's paying you, but if you let us go, I can make it worth your while. What is this? Uh, that, sir, is five Goober dollars. Legal tender at any participating Goofy Goober. This would explain how the Goofy Goober founder, an idiot who sold ice cream on rocks and sticks, turned the company into a multi-billion dollar franchise. He convinced people to believe that aliens would one day take them to a better place and got them to give them all their money. Another tactic that cults use to indoctrinate people is overloading them with compliments and making them feel special. And that's exactly what Goofy Goobers does to Patrick when he gets a job there. The Trini video says that they appreciate him. Hello and welcome! As a new Goofy Goober employee, we'd like you to know that we appreciate you. And then his manager says the exact same thing. I'm your manager, and I want you to know that I appreciate you. <laughs> and then despite Patrick messing up and causing chaos, the manager says it once again. I'll give you another chance tomorrow. If it doesn't work out, I'm afraid you're fired. <clears throat> in a most appreciative way. There is no reason for the manager to be this appreciative of Patrick after all the terrible work he's done. He's just trying to emotionally manipulate him. The tactic is especially effective on vulnerable people like children, and we see this in the Patrick Star Show. Not only did Patrick start eating Goofy Goober ice cream when he was young, and eventually ended up working there and worshipping their god, but this green kid also grew up to become an employee at Goofy Goobers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a clear pattern here. Kids who eat the ice cream all eventually join the cult. They are specifically targeting children for indoctrination, but their manipulation goes far beyond just psychological tactics. Trust me, we've just scratched the surface of how far Goofy Goobers will go to brainwash its members. Things are about to get darker.
There's a part in the SpongeBob movie where SpongeBob and Patrick go to Goofy Goobers and eat tons of ice cream all night to the point where they become completely drunk off of it. It's a really funny scene, but it begs the question, why does the ice cream get them drunk? Maybe that's just how ice cream works in the SpongeBob universe, and it's the show's way of making a family-friendly alcohol reference. But we've seen other instances where characters eat tons of ice cream and it doesn't have this effect on them. Alright, well, maybe this was just a one-time gag for the movie, and it's not a consistent part of the continuity. But in the season 11 episode, Call the Cops, we get this scene. <laughs> One too many goofy goobers again, eh, Patrick? So, another deliberate reference to Goofy Goober ice cream having a weird alcoholic effect on people. Is it possible that they put something in the ice cream to make people more open to cult indoctrination? Cults have been known to use drugs to keep their followers obedient and suggestible, one of the most infamous examples of this being Charles Manson, who used LSD to convince his followers of his beliefs. If this is the case with Goofy Goobers, they'd probably want to make sure everyone there eats as much ice cream as possible, and the Goofy Goober building is actually cleverly designed in a way to ensure sure that this happens. There are no windows in the entire building, so you can't tell whether it's day or night. And the Goofy Goober clock just has random numbers on it, so it's impossible to keep track of time. Because of this, SpongeBob eats ice cream all night and is actually late for work for the very first time. Also, can I point out the fact that the eyes on the clock seem to follow Patrick around in the Goofy Newbie? It's a really creepy and specific detail to include. I mean, we know from the movie that the eyes are usually supposed to be looking straight ahead, but here, they're always watching Patrick, their next target for indoctrination. Now, if the ice cream is what keeps their followers in line, they definitely want to make sure their employees were eating as much as possible. And it turns out, Goofy Goobers actually has a policy about this. Wow, I can't believe Goofy Goobers employees get to eat all the ice cream they want on this job. Hmm, the employees get to eat all the ice cream they want. Very interesting. And there's evidence to suggest that the ice cream can do a lot more than just make you suggestible. At the beginning of the Goofy Newbie, Patrick is holding up the line asking for samples of ice cream. The employee he's talking to gets frustrated and calls for security to kick him out. Hey, you sampled every flavor we have. Will you please just pick one? I would like you to use my spoon! But there's something oddly familiar about this employee. Hang on a second, isn't that Patrick's sister? The new spin-off, The Patrick Star Show, is a prequel to the main show that introduces us to Patrick's little sister, Squidina. And here, we see her all grown up, working at Goofy Goobers. She's even credited as Squidina and has the same voice actor. In The Patrick Star Show, we actually do see her eating Goofy Goober ice cream as a kid, which fits with the pattern of kids who eat the ice cream eventually getting indoctrinated into the cult. Now, Squidina and Patrick have a very close, loving relationship in The Patrick Star Show, but here, they act like they're total strangers. It's not surprising that Patrick would forget his own sister, but Squidina is always portrayed as being smart. It's almost like she completely forgot about him. One of the biggest tactics that cults use to indoctrinate people is isolating them from their friends and family to make them more vulnerable and dependent on the cult. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with Squidina. She has no memory of her family. The ice cream might just be affecting her memory as well. I mean, if she was just meant to be some random reusable character here with no continuity, why would the creator go out of their way to specifically credit her as Squidina, unlike the other random employees who are just credited as employee. Feels like they're deliberately trying to draw attention to it. At the end of the Goofy Newbie, Patrick goes crazy and eats a ton of the ice cream, and then the episode ends in a very interesting way. <laughs> Now, I don't think Patrick was actually abducted by aliens. I mean, we see him on Earth in the very next episode, and the UFO has the same fake look as the one in the training video. I think that because of all the ice cream he ate, he now fully accepts the Goofy Goober's beliefs, and it's caused him to hallucinate the UFO. So, at this point, I'd say we can make a very strong case for Goofy Goobers being a cult, but... With this realization comes a very dark and tragic new meaning for the Spongebob movie. Believe me, you will never look at that movie the same way again.
The 2004 Spongebob movie is my favorite thing to come out of the franchise. It's funny, it's emotional, and it encapsulates everything great about Spongebob. In this movie, Spongebob goes on a journey of self-discovery and realizes that he doesn't need to change who he is and grow up to fit into society. He just has to embrace his inner kid and be himself. It's a great message that feels really fitting for the character. But if you replace the word kid with Goofy Goober, Spongebob's arc takes on a whole new meaning. It's not about Spongebob embracing being himself. It's about Spongebob fully accepting the indoctrination and beliefs of the Goofy Goober cult. The movie starts with Spongebob not getting promoted to manager of the new Krusty Krab, a job that he desperately wanted and believed that he would get. When he finds out that Squidward got chosen instead of him, it completely destroys him. Cults will target vulnerable people who are at extremely low points, and the first place that Spongebob goes to after having his heart broken is Goofy Goobers. After a night of getting drunk off of ice cream, he becomes resentful of Mr. Krabs and decides to tell him off. I deserve that manager's job, but you didn't give it to me, cause you say I'm a kid. Well, I am 100% man, and this man has got something to say. In fact, if King Neptune didn't interrupt and try to kill Mr. Krabs, Spongebob probably would have quit and been fully able to join the cult. Spongebob and Patrick go on a quest to retrieve Neptune's crown, and it's almost like every obstacle they face along the way is specifically designed to make Spongebob and Patrick realize the dark truth about Goofy Goobers, but they fail to do so at every turn. So, they first stop at this tough guy bar that's full of men who beat up anyone that isn't manly enough. <laughs> I got no reason. But I think there's actually a lot more going on here than it seems. This place actually has an insane amount of similarities to the Goofy Goober ice cream parlor. They're both shaped like boats, they both have bikes out front and a bar inside, and they both have two word titles that start with the same letter, Goofy Goobers and Thug Tug. Is it possible that this place is actually a former Goofy Goobers establishment that was abandoned? I mean, they literally have the Goofy Goober theme song on hand. <laughs> SpongeBob, it's the Goofy Goober theme song! And they claim that no kids are allowed here, yet we see some old, kid sized handprints in the bathroom. If this really is a former Goofy Goobers, then these guys would probably know the truth about the cult, which would explain why they're so against having anyone who's not manly in the bar. It's not because they hate kids, it's because they're trying to keep out a dangerous cult. If Spongebob and Patrick just stuck around a little longer, maybe they would have learned this too, but they quickly sneak out and even make fun of the tough guys at the bar. Come on, Pat, one more time. Okay. We're on a baby hunt, and don't think we don't know how to we. <laughs> Clearly, they didn't get the lesson they were supposed to from this place. Then they go through a fish graveyard and stop at a random ice cream stand, but it turns out it was actually a trap for a monster to lure unsuspecting victims. Okay, Patrick, let's... Uh, you can let go now. Hmm, an ice cream store that's a facade for something darker that lures people in and keeps them trapped. It's like the ocean is literally screaming the truth to Spongebob and Patrick, but they just aren't getting it. But then, they reach an obstacle that's just too great for them to pass, and it makes them reevaluate some things about themselves. We're not kids! Open your eyes, Patrick! We worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake! You've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight! Oh, you're right, Spongebob! It isn't until Mindy helps them realize that they're more than just Goofy Goober kids that they can continue on their journey. They sing an entire song about how they believe in themselves now, and Patrick even says this. Now that we're men. Men. I changed my underwear! They have finally broken free from the cult's indoctrination, but... Unfortunately, it doesn't last very long. They're stopped by a hitman plankton hire to take them out, and he completely destroys all the progress they've made to grow as characters. Step aside and you won't have to feel the awesome wrath of our mustaches. These. <laughs> they were fake? Of course they were fake! They end up getting abducted by a scuba diver, who, to them, is a terrifying alien from another world. Which is an interesting parallel to Reginald Goober being taken by aliens.
They're taken to Shell City in a room full of dead fish, a place eerily similar to a death cult after a mass suicide. While SpongeBob and Patrick are being dragged to death, they decide to fully embrace the Goofy Goober's beliefs and spend their last moments alive singing the Goofy Goober theme song. I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah! yeah. But then, just like death cults always promise, they and everyone in the room are reborn when the sprinkler system turns on. <laughs> Whew, this is, uh, it's getting real dark. Then, we get to the climactic finale of the movie. Spongebob returns to the Krusty Krab, now a changed man. He has to battle Plankton and his army of mind-controlled slaves, and this is how the final confrontation plays out. And if I've learned anything during that time, it's that you are who you are. So yeah, I'm a kid, and I'm also a goofball, and a wingnut, and a knucklehead McSpazatron! <coughs> What's going on here? But most of all, I'm... Hey, okay, settle down. I'm... Take it easy. I'm... What the scallop? I'm a goofy goober! I'm a goofy goober. On first watch, this is such a satisfying and cathartic moment for Spongebob, but in reality, this is the moment that he has gone past the point of no return and becomes a goofy goober. Now, this is normally when I pretend like the video was over and then surprise you with a last minute twist, but I don't need to pretend this time. If you think this entire video has been insane rambling and none of this could possibly be intentional, well then just for you, I have saved my best piece of evidence for last. Are you ready? While Spongebob sings the Goofy Goober song, we cut to him standing on the world and getting abducted by a UFO. And even the UFO's lights make a pattern of red, yellow, red, which is eerily similar to the Goofy Goober UFO that has two red cherries with a yellow banana in the middle. And that is the Goofy Goober alien death cult theory. Uh, wow. Didn't think I could, uh, make these theories any darker, could ya? Gotta love that good old family-friendly PG-rated SpongeBob. I am having so much fun making these videos. Don't worry, we've got plenty more on the way. I'm just making SpongeBob stuff from now on. I've been your host, Alex the SpongeBob Guy. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Hey, I'm gonna assume you're still down here. Um, I thought about what you asked and I'm sorry, I, I just can't. I mean, it's, it's one thing to, to buy you meat, but a living animal, like a cat, that's not a line that I'm willing to cross. And if that means you're not gonna give me SpongeBob theories anymore, then so be it, but Honestly, man, good luck finding someone else that's going to be willing to be a part of whatever this weird relationship is between us. Come on, I know you can hear me. What did you do? My boy, I took what you brought me. No. No, 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 but, but I changed my mind. I, I didn't, I didn't give you the cat. You purchased the cat. You brought it to this home. I simply finished the job. No, no, th this is not what I wanted, okay? This is- this isn't worth it! We are fucking done! My boy, we both know you can't go back now.
Okay. This is the last time and then I want you out of this house. Uh, uh, uh.